Chapter one is about the fundamentals of managerial economics. So we'll jump right in. Our learning objectives are first to look at the six principles for effective managerial decision making. Then we'll look at some of those elements such as goals, constraints, incentives, and then look at accounting versus economic profits, the role of profits in the market economy, and then revisit the Porter's Five Forces framework, but now from a perspective of managerial economics. Then we'll do a brief refresher on present value analysis and time valued money. And we'll end up with an important topic for this chapter, which is marginal analysis, looking at how to find optimal levels of a particular equation. In this case, we're gonna look at optimal levels to achieve maximum profit. What is managerial economics? It's a study of how to direct scarce resources in a way that most efficiently achieves a managerial goal. In most cases, we're gonna use profit as that goal in this course. And we know that sound decision-making involves having the goals and then making choices that achieves those goals. And one of the challenges that we'll have in achieving the goal are constraints. So much about economics is about factoring in the impact of constraints on our decisions. So how do managers use manager economics? Well, examples might be, should a firm purchase components like disk drives or chips from other manufacturers, or should they produce them within their own firm? Or should they produce one type of automobile or several different models? Or how many televisions should a firm produce and at what price should they sell them? What are the six basic principles of managerial economics? First is identify your goals and constraints. Next is recognize the nature and importance of profits. Third is understand incentives. Fourth, understand the markets. Fifth is recognize time value money in decisions and then use marginal analysis to complete your analysis and recommendations. So let's look at decisions and what the impact of constraints are. First, we want well-defined goals. And as we stated, we're gonna use maximizing profits. Then we'll look at constraints. They might be technological constraints or they could be the basics of the inputs production, which could be labor or other assets necessary to produce your products. What is the role of profits? It's to signal resource holders where the resources are most highly valued by society. And that's a pretty high level goal, but that's what economics does. It does an allocation of scarce resources to where the, the maximum benefit is achieved by society. And then we're gonna look at two definitions of the profits. We all know accounting profit, that's looking at revenues minus the cost of those products and ancillary costs to run the enterprise. Economic profit is different because not only does it include the accounting profit, but it also explicitly considers the opportunity costs because that's, that's really generating true economic profit. If you're making a, an accounting profit, but you're doing something wildly inefficient or not in the most maximal use of your resources and skills, you're not really creating the maximum economic profit. So economic profit also considers what other things you could be doing. Next, how do incentives impact individuals and therefore management decisions? Well, not always, but quite often, individuals and groups maximize economic self-interest. We might hope that everyone's pulling on the oars in the same direction as a company, but often people looking at their own individual circumstance to maximize their individual self-interest, not necessarily the same as the company as a whole. So we're looking at why incentives impact us, Im impacts the resources that we use, and how hard indiv individuals work. So we're constantly looking at as managers, how do we align the interests of all those in the company, including ourselves as managers, but also our direct reports on how everyone can pull on the oars in the same direction. And that's by aligning incentives for self-interest and the organizational interests. And we're going to hopefully simultaneously enhance the productivity and profitability of the company as a whole. And in doing so, help individuals maximize their own self-interest. So what constitutes a market? Well, there's two sides of the market. There's a buyer and a seller, and the market helped make that exchange occur. So the bargaining position, as we've seen in Porter's Five Forces, come from many different aspects. Some are consumer to producer, others are consumer to consumer, then they're producer to producer. And so these are rivalries that form the dynamics in which a market operates. And another important player is the government, the regulatory practices and constraints that they place on the operations of the market, whether that's in the production of goods or the exchange of goods. Looking at the Porter's Five Forces now with a managerial economic lens, 
we see in the area of, of entry that we look at the cost of entry, things like economies of scale, also switching costs, right? These are items that we're gonna look at, look at in this course and have bearing in a Porter's Five Forces analysis. The power of input suppliers, we'll look at this when we look at monopolies and perfect competition. The power of buyers, we'll look at the price value considerations for why a consumer purchases one product versus another and at white prices clear the market. Industry rivalry, here we'll examine the state of the industry. And again, in terms of monopolistic or concentration of an industry, or is it pure competition? And finally, substitutes and complements. We'll look at this at the product level, which is what alternatives the, does the consumer have in purchasing your product versus another? And also what are some of the other impact that we might have to tilt that decision in our direction to enhance the attractiveness of our offering to our customers? So we'll see that the Porter's Five Forces are things that we've seen. However, in this course, we're gonna see other aspects that go deeper into the analysis that will make our analysis a little bit more precise, a little more meaningful.